Hey guys, so a lot of you guys have been asking for an episode on how to embroider on stretchy fabrics because some of you have been coming across some issues with it. So in this episode, I'm gonna tell you what are some of the issues that can arise when you're embroidering on stretchy polyester fabric and what you can do to solve them. In this special episode of Embroidery Hub, performance wear. So first things first, I'm actually going to hoop something up and embroider it for you guys. It is a stock design, but I just wanna show you guys that it is possible to embroider stock designs even on polyester fabric. Now, a lot of you will actually get your design custom made if you are doing this as a business. So you'd probably get like a business logo custom made and you can always tell your digitizer that you're gonna be working with stretchy fabrics so that they can take uh, steps in the digitizing process that will make your embroidery life easier. Before we get started, as always, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or nice things to say throughout the video, uh, please do leave some comments below. All of the love that you guys have showed us has really helped us grow and we are literally right there about to break 30,000. So thank you guys again and let's just get right in. So as for the materials I'm going to be using for this particular project, I am going to be using No Show Cutaway. And the reason why I'm using No Show Cutaway is because it is just a, such a soft cutaway. And normally when you use cutaway on garments like this, since it is so stretchy and soft, it tends to look a little bit blocky and it tends to not drape very well. So instead, I'm gonna use a very soft no-show cutaway to make sure that I'm still getting the support that I need for my stitches. We all know that with stretchy fabrics, we need to use cutaway because it gives us the most stabilization and you need more stabilization the stretchier the garment is. But our cutaway also tends to be a little bit tougher and stiff. So this no-show is just very soft and it's just gonna look really, really nice on this garment. Next up, I'm going to be using a hoop that is actually slightly larger than the hoop that I would normally use. And the reason being is because when we have stretchy fabrics, when we're working with these type of fabrics, we tend to get something around the design called pinching and puckering. And basically, it just kind of looks a little bit distorted around the design. The fabric kind of just bounces right back up because remember, it is stretching, right? So once you take it out of the hoop, it's gonna bounce right back up and start to pinch. So a way that I minimize it is by actually going a size up on the hoop. That way the actual fabric right in the center where it is being embroidered is going to stay pretty much the same. It is not going to stretch as much. Remember, when you have a smaller hoop, it's going to be stretching it a lot more. So instead, your fabric is gonna be more stretched here at the ends and not so much right where the design is gonna land, which is gonna make sure that it minimizes that pinching. And lastly, I'm going to be using ballpoint needles instead of my standard sharp point needles. Now, I typically use 7511 sharp point needles for most embroidery projects. However, when we are working with stretchy fabrics, we want to make sure that we're using ballpoint needles instead. And the reason being is because it's so delicate and it's so stretchy that the sharp point needle will actually penetrate through and cut through these fibers in the cloth. Whereas with the bob point needles, they're just going to slip in between those fibers and not cut it. So what can happen if you're embroidering on performance wear that is thin like this one, you can run into getting actual holes in your garment. So to prevent that, we are using bob point needles instead. If you guys are using Gross Becker needles, just look for the ones that say FFG SES and that's gonna tell you that it's a ballpoint needle. So I'm using 7511 ballpoint for this project. As far as thread, I can go ahead and use the exact same thread that I normally use, 100% polyester isocord thread is what I will be using on this project. I personally like to use polyester thread, especially on performance wear, because remember, this is going to be washed very frequently and polyester thread is the best for commercial uses and for anything that's going to undergo any uh, frequent laundering. And lastly, we can't forget our temporary adhesive spray, which I'm going to be using for hooping this garment. And the reason why I'm using this is because it's just going to add extra stability. And remember, we're working with stretchy fabric, so we want to stabilize as much as possible without, of course, weighing down the design. All right, so I went ahead and I changed the needles to the ballpoint needles, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and hoop uh, my backing with my fabric. And I'm going to start off with just spraying temporary adhesive spray on the actual fabric. And I love the spray because it doesn't get all gummy. It doesn't gum up the needles, so I definitely recommend this brand. 
And so I'm just spraying it on one piece of backing. And now I'm gonna go ahead and place the backing underneath. And hooping is super important in every board design, but even more important when working with performance wear because you wanna make sure that you're not hooping too tight and you wanna make sure that everything is nice and flat so that your garment isn't moving around too much during the embroidery process. So now that we got our surface nice and even, I am gonna go ahead and grab the bottom ring and just hoop as I normally would. So now keep in mind when you are hooping, you definitely do not want to hoop too tightly or pull on any of the fabric because that's going to cause pinching again. So I'm leaving it pretty not loose just not as tight as i normally would now remember don't leave it too loose because you could get bird nesting so you know don't take this too literally just don't be it as tight as normal all right so i went ahead and traced my design i'm pretty happy with where it's going to land I made sure I covered all my bases. I have my correct needles in, um, exactly in the colors that I'm gonna be using. And I have my fabric hooped exactly how I want it to, to minimize that pinching. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press start and hope for the best. I'm just gonna go ahead and unhoop. Ooh. Alrighty. And literally zero puckering with that trick. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the backing. And I always like to leave a little, I would say like three fourths of an inch. Just so that it's not too obvious where the backing starts unless you have a really steady hand and you could just get really, really close to it. So if you actually wanted to, you can go ahead and cut a little bit closer, but once this gets washed, that backing is gonna just get a lot softer and kind of blend into the garment, so you're not gonna see it much. However, if you want to, you can go ahead and cut a little bit closer. All right, so this looks amazing. There's absolutely no pinching and puckering. Um, and what I love about the nail show is that it is so soft and it allows the fabric to just drape really nicely. It doesn't look blocky, which is a problem that we have um, a lot with these very sheer polyester type of fabrics. All right, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so, so very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. All of the love that you guys show us really helps us grow. So I truly, truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And don't forget before you go, join our Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery, where you can chat with me and thousands of other embroiderers, ask any questions you have, or if you're already a pro, feel free to show off in our Facebook group. All right, thank you again, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye.